Father, we pray. Everlasting God and our Father, we thank and appreciate you today for your grace and your presence upon our lives. For today you've gathered us again in this day of restoration service, that we might be restored by you. Father, I pray for every man, every woman, under the influence of my voice, that all will be restored in full, no matter what they've lost before now. I pray total recovery in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today, I welcome each and every one of you, of us, under this divine ministration of uh, our day of restoration. Today being the day of restoration, my prayer is uh, all that are under the influence of my voice will be totally restored by God and you will recover all without fail in the name of Jesus Christ. I therefore want to welcome you in today's message. And the message is the finality. The finality. And when we talk about fin finality, we are talking about the fact or impression of being the final or irreversible. The fact of being of impression or impression of being final or irreversible. Now, I want you to understand, when you talk about finality, we are talking about knowing that this is the final, that you will not have opportunity again, or that you know that this is final. There will be no other instruction again. This final order, this is final instruction, this is a final thing you need to do in order to succeed, in order to survive. So we are going to the book of uh, uh, Ephesians chapter number 6 from verse number 10 to verse number 17. Finally, my brethren, Finally, my brethren be, strong be strong in the Lord in the and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of, of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have for take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins got about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, Take in the shield of faith, wherein ye shall, shall be able to quench all the fairy dust of the enemy. Take also the helmet of salvation, and take also the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is the final word. This is a where it all must everything that has beginning must have an end so paul addressed the church in ephesus and spoke to them in diverse issues after talking to them in all these things that we make them stand firm in their faith and live well in their faith after he has given them all these instructions he therefore told them finally brethren the same way i am speaking to you today finally brethren as you who is listening to me right now finally my brother Finally, my sister, listen to this instruction. The instruction here is what? I want you to look at the instruction very specifically. Uh, finally, my brethren, put on the whole armor of God. 
put on the whole armor of God. But before he talks about putting on the whole armor of God, verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Being strong in the Lord does not necessarily mean flexing muscles. It does mean uniting yourself with the power of God, with what God can do. Not what you can do, but with what God can do. Finally, brethren, unite yourself with only what God can do, not what you can do. Do not learn upon your own misunderstanding. Do not think that you can do anything. Unite yourself with the strength of the Lord. It is when uh, the, I am weak and I can trust in the power of God, it is only then that I am strong. But when you want to struggle and fight by yourself, you will lose it. Now, I want to make a little story. And that story is about an elephant and uh, a fly. An elephant was crossing a very old bridge. And the fly on the ear of the elephant. And as the elephant was crossing the bridge, the bridge was making noise about to break. And as it was shaking the bridge, shaking the bridge, as the elephant was crossing across the bridge, and then the, and the, the, the fly that was at the ear of the elephant was there calmly and quietly as the elephant was moving and shaking the bridge until the elephant got to the other side of the bridge. Then the fly whispered at the ear of the elephant, we shook the bridge together. That is the strength of the fly. The strength of the fly is only to pitch upon the elephant in order to shake the bridge. Or leaving the fly alone, the fly cannot shake the bridge. So the truth is that we are just like fly. We can only stand on in the power of God to shake the bridge as that uh, uh, fly was at the ear of the elephant and they moved the bridge together. So that is what it means to unite yourself with the strength of the Lord, with the power of the Lord and the making sure that whatever God can do is what you boast about. It is the power of God, not your power. It is the grace of God, not your power. The power of God is what you should rely upon on everyday life. So unite yourself with the power of the Lord. As you unite yourself with the power of the Lord, with the grace of God wrapped all around you, with the anointing of God covering you on every side. That is your power. That is your strength. That is what you can boast about. Without the power of God, you are nothing. Without the grace of God, you cannot face the powers and principalities. You cannot face the wickedness of this world. The cosmic powers in the heavenly places. The cosmic powers that operate the system of this world. You cannot face them. But therefore today, I want to invite you to where the power is. The power is only in uniting yourself in the power of the Lord. Unite yourself. Apart from this instruction, Christians, you don't have any power. Man, you don't have any power. The only power we have in order to conquer the world, in order to conquer all powers, all the principalities, all the troubles of life, it is only in the power of God that we can do that. Therefore, brethren, I want you to look at yourself. Are you now united with the power of God? 
I want you to unite your strength. It is only what God can do. Every day, call upon him. Every day, pray unto him. Every day, ask him, oh Lord, what next do you want me to do? Let God be your strength. Let God, by the power of God, you will conquer. By the anointing of God, you will overcome. And listen to me. The Bible is saying something emphatically. You put on the whole armor of God. Because that is we, those things we actually serve as a protection unto you. And as we go on, can we see verse number uh, uh, five, uh, verse number 11? Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of darkness. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against rulers of uh, darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, whether it be it in high places. Let us see. We are a four arch enemy, the four classes of Luciferians that we have to fight against. And in fighting against them, they are spiritual. And they are also wicked. And they are not civilians. They are forces. Therefore, you must understand this and understand that the Lord said there is a fight. We wrestle not. Wrestling here means fight. It means war. It means attack. It means serious contending. So, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So, you are not fighting against that man. You are not fighting against that woman. You are fighting a power. You are fighting a spiritual wickedness. The Bible calls them, there are four categories. And one is principalities. The other is powers. The other is wicked rulers of this world. And the third is a wickedness in high places. Now, the fourth wickedness in high places... These spiritual powers, these Luciferians, uses men to manifest their evil work here on earth. And therefore, I want you to know, the only way to overcome, to fight and conquer, is by uniting yourself with the power that is called the ultimate, the mighty power, the glorious power. That is the power of God, the dynamite, the great dynamite. That is the authority of God. Fighting against the powers and principalities. Fighting against the spiritual wickedness of this world. Fighting against the dark rulers. Fighting against all principalities. It is not what you can do by simply willing to do that. It's not what you can do by simply thinking you can do that. It's not what you can do by simply Flexing muscles that you can do it. It is when you unite with the power of the Lord, you fight a fight and win the battle in the name of Jesus Christ. And when you are united with the Lord, when you are united with the power of the Lord, no weapon of the enemy will prosper in your life. No attack of the enemy will prosper in your life. The Lord said, put on the whole armor. And what are the armor? Shall we read the armor? And see what God has provided for us as armor. Stand therefore. Stand therefore. Having your loins girt about. Guide your loins with your truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And another thing is righteousness, breastplate. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Your feet will be shod with preparation of gospel of peace. So you'll be ready to preach the gospel. Above all. Above all. The shield of faith. You put on the shield of faith. Where we are with you can use it to quench the fairy darts of the wicked. The arrows from all angles, the arrows from anywhere. They, then the Lord provided this shield as your faith. And take the helmet. Take the helmet to cover your head because when the head is off, you can do nothing. So cover your head with salvation. Make sure you are safe before going into battle. Otherwise, you become like the sons of scavers. And the sons of the spirit, the sons of Skivers, I want to mention, the sons of Skivers are going to cast devil out in the name of the poor, of Jesus, whom Paul preached. The demon asked them, 
Jesus I know. Paul I know, but you, who are you? You need to be saved before you can talk about fighting the devil. You need to give your life to Jesus Christ. You need to have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You need to have accepted the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary in order to be able to fight the enemy. You cannot fight the enemy unless you are united with the strength of God. That is the only way you can fight. That is the only way you can be victorious. That is the only way you can win. Therefore, these are the things that the Lord enumerated for us as the armor. And this armor, the Lord wants you to put them on so that you, wherever the enemy will be firing, you will be impenetrable. The arrows of the enemy will not penetrate you. You will pr be protected in all sides. There are Weapons of protection and there are weapons of offense. That is defensive and offensive weapon. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, should be your offense, offensive weapon. And this offensive weapon, Jesus used it when the devil came to tempt him. So if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, Jesus said yes. The Lord also said, the word of God says. So you must always, always be ready. To use the word of God against the enemy. Because that is the oracle of God. And when you declare it, the enemy will be on the run. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So you have to submit. That is uniting yourself with the strength of the Lord. Uniting yourself with the power of the Lord. And once you do this, my dear brethren, the, no weapon of the enemy will penetrate you. And you will begin to fight and win every battle. No matter the attack, no matter the wickedness, in any area, you will conquer them. You will conquer principalities. You will conquer powers. You will conquer the rulers of darkness of this world. You will conquer all wickedness of men. Wickedness of powers. Wickedness of the Luciferians. You will conquer them. You will be victorious about them. And therefore, right now, I want you to see this scriptural portion. I want us to read the second Corinthians, chapter number 10. We are reading from verse number 3 through verse number 5. Though we walk in this flesh, we walk in this flesh war my war is not after this flesh. Listen, listen first. Uh, uh, I do, I live in this flesh, but my fight is not after this, uh, this flesh. So there is a war. There is a battle. There is a war. There's a battle, child of God. There's a war. There's a battle. Remember, anybody that tells you that when you receive Jesus Christ, everything will be made of roses is telling you a lie. It's building you for a fall. And therefore, what I want you to note is that there are two days in your life. Two days in the life of every man living in the face of the earth. The first one is a good day. The second one is evil day. The first one is a good day. The other day is evil day. On the good day, what do you do? You prepare yourself. You prepare your life. You be strong in the Lord. You align yourself with the Lord on a good day. On the evil day, you stand to fight the enemy. On the evil day, you fight. You stand and fight the enemy. You are not a coward to run away. We are not runaways. No, no, no. We stand. They that do know their God, all shall stand and do exploit. You cannot do exploit when you cannot stand. Who is a, a, a warrior? Who is a variant? Who is a hero? A hero is a man that stands a moment after others have run away. Therefore, I want you to, I want you to stand. Say, I'm not going to run away. I'm not going to run away. I'm a child of the Most High. I'm a brave child of God. The spirit God has given to me is not of timidity and fear, but that of boldness and power. Therefore, stand your ground in the day that is called evil days. Fight. Stand your ground and fight. In the day that is called the good day, that day, prepare yourself for the fight ahead because surely they shall gather. Surely the battle will come. Surely there is a day of battle, but we wrestle not against flesh and blood. 
We do not fight against human beings. Okay? Or against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness, against the rulers of darkness of this world. These are the ones we fight. These are the ones we bind. These are the ones we conquer. These, when you conquer them, you gain your victory. When you conquer them, you recover all. When you conquer them, you take back what the enemy has taken from you. For it is not the will of the devil, the Lucifer, that what he lost, man will enjoy it. No, he is your number one enemy. He wants to take you out of your possession so that he can take over. Therefore, right now, everything you are doing, get to of taking possession, taking back all that the enemy has taken away from you. But you can do it with the strength of the Lord, with the power of the Lord, with the anointing of the Lord. With God on your side, you will recover. You will conquer. You will overcome. You will dominate. You will become victorious. You will have all because you are created for this. That is why you were created to subdue and dominate. You have to rule over the earth. No order will take over. No power will take over. No wickedness will take over the earth while you are there. If the stone will praise God, not as I'm, uh, not when I'm alive, not when I am living, I think you can say that as well. I think you can declare that as well. If any man if any power, if any territory is going to be taken, not under my watch, not under my watch. I know my Redeemer live it. I know my Redeemer live it. He's able to do that which I commit in his care as well. Therefore, right now, I want you to begin to build to recover because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. The weapons of our warfare, of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty. True God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Listen to me. Your weapon is mighty through God. Right now, I want you to begin to unite with God because your weapon is not carnal. It's not earthly. It's not gone. It's not AK-47. It's not tank, uh, the ammo tank. It's not all these things. But they are mighty weapons through God to the pulling down of every stronghold, casting down all the imaginations. Maybe they are in their occultic coven. Imagining and invoking you and say, come, come. The Lord says it's not going to happen. By the anointing of the Lord, you will cast down their imagination. And every evil thought that is raised against the word of God, that is raised against the mandate of God in your life, the Lord will give you the enablement because the weapon you have is a spiritual warf uh, weapon. It's a mighty weapon that comes from God Almighty. And with it, you can destroy, you can overcome, you can conquer, you can take over, you can recover, you can take all that the enemy has taken away from you. Come on, child of God, arise and recover because it is your time. You cannot be here. The enemy will be taking territories, destroying people, and conquering people. And you are here. Come on, go out. Show yourself with the gospel of peace and they conquer the world with the gospel. That is what you need to do. All right. Having in a readiness to revenge, all to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. Come on, unite yourself with it. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Now unite yourself with the strength of the Lord and be victorious right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you. By the authority of the Holy Ghost, every territory that the enemy has taken away from you, from your people, from your family, from your marriage, from anything that belongs to you that the enemy is occupying. Today I unseat them. I command them to get out of your place. Get out of your space. And declare it in the name of Jesus Christ that every evil power, evil force, every wickedness, come on, get out of the child of God's space. And uh, I declare Oh, you child of God, rise and occupy your place. Rise and take over. Rise and recover your place. Rise and recover your authority, for there is authority in you. I de therefore declare in the name above all other names, you have recovered. And I declare that in Jesus, the most wonderful name. Amen.